All right, you guys, if you're seeing this video and you don't know what you're about to watch, this is how to clean a wild hog. We don't typically put it on YouTube because we'll get demonetized. But I'm going to beat the system by not monetizing this video. There's not going to be any ads in it, so it will be there for you to watch. If you want to share it with your buddies, I'm going to get the camera in close and I'm going to show you exactly how we do it. This is Taylor. She killed this hog. She's never cleaned one, and I'm going to teach you guys and her at the same time. So as you can clearly see, we've gutted the animal. She killed this hog yesterday afternoon. It was super cold last night, so we went ahead and gutted it. Now it's ready to completely clean. I split it right here, pulled out its poop chute, got all that nasty stuff out. It hung all night long, and it's super cold. This is a sow, probably 180 pounds, and I'm gonna start right here on her leg. Just make a slit, just like that. I'll try to take a little piece of skin and just start slowly working it. You want to cut from the inside out so you don't get all that hair on the meat. It doesn't really matter what knife you use, just find a knife that you're comfortable with and that works for you. So now I'm going to make a ring around its leg just like that. The most important thing is right back here. So I make a slit in the legs, that's what it's hanging. This is his Achilles tendon. The only spot you have to be really careful is right here because if you cut that tendon all the way through, your hog's gonna hit the ground. See how I did that without cutting that? I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing on this side. Now I'll come down on the ribs. I want to get the whole thing where I can start peeling it off the back. So this isn't a big farm raised domestic hog where you need all this fat. You actually, you don't need it much of it at all. This is Goose, by the way, here smelling. It's his first hog ever, so I'm not even gonna yell at him. He deserves to smell it too. Right here, I'll come from the back side, and I'm sort of positioning, look at his legs. I'm using his legs so now I can hold it. I'm going to just work my way up. If this hog was still warm, it's a lot easier to clean because the meat sort of just peels right off. Or the skin, not the meat. You'll get to a point where once you get the skin in the right situation, it'll just peel right off. You can actually pull it. So now I got one side completely ready to go. I'm gonna do the same to the other. Stick my knife in just like that. Grab his leg again. I know it's hard to see some of the angles because I'm constantly moving and Taylor's trying to get you the best shots. You just take your time. A lot of people use gloves when they're cleaning a wild hog. I don't, it's just something I've never done. They do carry certain diseases where I guess one in a gazillion chances you could get, but that's how I go out, that's how I go out. I'm also going to show you in this video how to completely quarter it. Come right here, get their tail, and you start cutting, and you'll find there's a joint right there. Right there. You can clearly see there's a ton of fat on this hog. Well, if you take it to the butcher, he's going to cut most of it out and throw it away anyways. If you make sausage, he'll add a little bit of fat, but it'll probably use beef fat. Let me make a slit right here. And start pulling it down. Now here's the important part. Watch how I do it. It's gonna go fast. Come stand right here. You see his shoulder and his armpit? Make that slit right there. Oh, 
All you're really doing is just taking his clothes off. Get right here, cut some of this fat off. Your bacon comes from right here, but these wild hogs don't have enough meat and fat on them to make bacon for the most part. I guess somebody could, but there's not that much on it. Now Taylor last night was so intrigued. She's like, I can't see where I hit him. Well, that was when the skin on, you're about to see where she hit it. Goose, what you think? Look at this right here. Look at the hole. That's where she shot the hog. Does this smell good or what? You just let your knife do the work. Gravity's gonna pull the hide down. Now right here it can get a little tricky, especially when you're by yourself in the armpits. Take the skin, get it off the ribs. You paying attention while you're filming so you can do the next one? Yeah. <laughs> Jake, my son Jake, my 12 year old Jake, he never was interested in cleaning a hog or a deer. And then he finally did one a couple months back. If he was here right now, he would be pissed if I wasn't letting him do it. He absolutely loves it now. As so I come in here, get that skin off. Hog aren't like deer, they don't have a ton of neck meat like a buckwood or a bigger doe. I almost feel weird filming this because I'm so scared of doing it normally with YouTube. It's pretty fun now. I can show you everything. All right, here comes the grotesque part. Normally I would twist it, but I hurt my ribs real bad skiing. So we're gonna do it like this. Get you a pair of loppers. And off with the head. All right, here's gonna be the interesting fact. A lot of people are like, what damage does a bullet cause? See that shoulder looks beautiful. It's perfect, nothing really wrong with it. Wait till you see this one. Hear that? That's a rib, that's a rib cage. So I'm just sort of flaying it like a fish right down that rib cage. Watch this as I open it. Look at that. That's what that bullet did. Oh wow. So Taylor wasn't sure last night because the hog was still twitching. She goes, is it dead? Well, I said, is it dead? <laughs> These hogs, where she hit it, she immediately severed its spinal cord. This hog was dead on arrival. Now you can salvage this. You can put it in the cooler when you get home. Come over here. You can go through it and cut all that bloodshot meat out or just let your processor do it. Now watch, come right here over my shoulder, like right here. I'm gonna show you how to debone one without using loppers. Come right here and then cut underneath. Hold it sideways and just start putting a little bit of tension right here on that joint and you'll hear it pop. You'll typically see people use a saw to do that. Look how easy it is. Just popped right off. Now the second shoulder can be a little bit more difficult because of the angle. Come in here close. You see how I got this knife? I'm pinning it against its ribs, sliding it in there like that. And it just comes right off. An animal's shoulder doesn't have a joint that's connected to the body. It's all connected. I don't know the technical, like the ham right here has an actual joint, like a ball joint on your truck. The shoulder doesn't. It's more connected with mus muscles and 
tendon. Now you see, here's the foot, here's the upper part of the shoulder. Cut closer to the upper part, just like this. Once that's done, you come underneath. I have my wrist twisted like this right here. It's twisted and I'll just start cutting and you'll hear it pop. Just that simple. You don't force anything. You just let your knife cut through there. It comes right off. All right, so around the ribs, I'll cut off a little bit of this excess fat. Again, you don't need it. Now we're gonna take off the back straps. It's backbone is right here. This is a lot like flaying a fish. I was on the left side. Now I'm going to do it down the right side. And what you're watching is exactly how you clean the deer too. So if you watch this and you want to know how to clean a deer, it's the same thing. Now right here is the beginning of their ham. So I'm going to make a cut. I'm going to stick my thumb in here. And you'll feel where its ribs are and its backbone. And it's all feel. You just get in there like so. This hog has really big back straps, which are just like the pork chops. You just peel it out of there. Almost identical to flaying a fish. Now, if you wanted to have pork chops, a, a good processor could cut them for you, but we just take them off and heck with the bone. There's the tenderloin slash back strap. Again, I'm gonna come up here, get some of this junk out, get this piece right here in the corner. Throw it on the ground. I'm going to show you the next step. So now we have it fully exposed. This is what Floridians call a tenderloin. What I just cut out was a back strap. This is what we call a tenderloin. It is exactly the same as cutting out the back strap except for this is in its inner guts. It's all bone. It's just a nice little chunk of meat that's hidden in there. When you get home, you can cut all that little bit of fat off. You make a cut right there. Just the same, I can come in from this side. Because it's all bone in there, you know where it's at. And this one just sort of plucks out. Cut that little bit of junk off. Look at that. All right, we need to cut this other back strap out. Now, come in here. You can actually do it different. I'm going to do it this differently this time. Here's the ribs. really just using the tip of my knife at this point too. Now you can see this side is where the bullet went through. You just cut all that off when you get home. I'll take these loppers right here. Cut that off. Make you a little cut in the rib so you have a handle. And then get your knife in here. You'll just feel where there's not bone. I might need to take the loppers. I'll cut that last little bit off, but look at those beautiful things. Good. Typically, Taylor wouldn't be filming. I'd have her hold the carcass so it wasn't bouncing on me so bad. 
but we got to show you guys so she's got to hold the camera right there all right so i just repeated the process i cut it with the loppers all the way down but i'm going to do it differently here i'm going to keep this whole neck bone and shoulder and rib section together because i have some friends from down in south america that will take this whole thing boil it down and make the most amazing food out of it they will care less about that little bit of bloodshot area now this last part if i had a cutting table it would be much easier so i'm going to show you how i'll do it when i don't have a cutting table there's a bone right here in his hip that you got to stick your knife in there come around and then come right down to the back and cut it through you would not want somebody to do this to you with a knife. See how I can just spread it? See that little ball joint right in there? Yep. That's all we're looking for, because once you get that popped, it's just gonna come right apart. This is what I was talking about on the shoulder. The shoulder doesn't have a ball joint like this, only the ham. that big beautiful ham mm. right here cutting right under here all the way loose now I've got its toes pointed up you see this little flat spot yep. there's a little sweet spot in there that when you find it just pops right off just like that we're pretty much done we just got this last piece you see this? That's his kneecap, right in the middle. If you ever learn how to joint one out like that and you're at a camp and you clean one in front of people, they will know you know what you're doing. Anybody can grab loppers and just cut it. But if somebody sees you do that right there, they'll know you know how to clean a hog. This meat's already freezing cold, so I don't have to submerge it nice. We'll see y'all in the next one.